All right. Alexa, off. Alexa, off. Alexa, off. That was um my favorite tune, which became to be known as my favorite tune called Elevator Going Up by Miss Monique Bingham, uh, produced by Mr. Louis Vega out of New York City. That has become a favorite. That's seven years old, but it's an inspirational song to me. And uh it's been on my it's on my yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And it's been on my um, you know, on my playlist ever since I play it on my broadcast pretty much every night. It's in heavy, you know. It's in heavy illumination. I don't like to say rotation. I say in heavy illumination because I like the message of the song. It speaks about elevation, ascension. That's why it says elevated going up. Um, so peace out to and shout out to Louis Vega, Mr. Louis Vega and Miss Monique Bingham. I love the music. Keep cranking it out. You'll hear it more. So I just want to say good evening to everyone. I am your host, Intellectual Nubin Minkaris. This is High and Mighty Thoughts with me, Nubin Minkaris, the Intellectual Nubin Minkaris. Before I start, in the name of Amin the Supreme, the All-Powerful, the one and only True Lord, and Amin we trust, and Amin we thank, and in Amin we continue forward forever. Tonight, tonight, I'm going to do something spectacular. I think it's going to be a spectacular show because I have a special guest with me tonight. Uh, I'm gonna let John know who the special guest get, uh, who the special guest is when I announce him. So he's gonna be, you know, he's gonna reveal a lot of things, and I want to wait till I introduce this person. But I'm gonna give a great build to the title of um, tonight's podcast on High and Mighty Thoughts is "The Great Revelation: Debunking the Lies from Moron TV" with my special featured guest. You know what? Who Moron TV is? That's uh, to fart the gay. You know what I'm saying? And his group of morons who you would like to come into my uh, chats now. Because I don't even mess with this dude no more. I don't even, he did his little fake exposés on me, calling me Scott Anthony, which is not my name. I haven't been Scott Anthony in 24 years. He put up this garbage about me and, you know, did a little voice. Um, you know, he saved my little voice recording I did while I was basically threatening him with legal action. Because I don't, I, you know, he ain't worth no other type of threat. I don't threaten people. You see, I, you know, if I'm a, you know, if it, you know, it's whatever. I don't threaten people. I don't put my hands on people. I don't harm people. I'm a community leader, and this person has been trying to dirty up my name for the last two or three weeks now. He's been doing these fake exposés on me, getting ex-members of our international indigenous community to tell lies on me, females who have not been in this community for years. I don't mean months, but for years. Now you got some we just got rid of, some angry, black, bitter females who have nothing better to do with themselves, who have nothing going on in their life, who just move through life trying to get over on people. they professional get over chicks. You see, a bunch of liars, a bunch of deceivers, a bunch of bitter, angry, black, lonely females who are washed up, no man wants them, and any male that lays down with them is only getting the last cut of the bad round of old ass. You see, old stale ass. These chicks are multiple baby mamas. They bitter, right? They angry, they broke, and they mad. And they trying to tear down somebody who has made it a career of uplifting himself and his people collectively. Because I had a better vision for our people who the world calls black people. Now, I don't share this vision with every so-called black person because look at these females and a few males who will remain nameless until they pop up and decide to start mentioning my name and start telling lies on me. These people wanted to paint me as a cult leader. I told them I am not a cult leader. I am a community leader. That's lie number one. T Toronto Johnson, he tried to paint me as a cult leader. Okay, I'm not a cult leader. I am a community leader. I don't, the difference between a cult leader and a community leader is this. A cult leader has strange practices and rituals that they do with their followers that is from the outside world that are devious, demonic, you know, um, uh, um, you know, just degenerate, usually degenerate things that they participate in and that's not me. 
That's not me at all. I'm a normal man. I have normal desires as a heterosexual man. I already said that. The most people could do with these females, they could do is hetero shame me and try to lie and say that I did this way, I did that, I did like men do with women. We have relations, consensual relations with consenting adult women. And they tried to make it seem as though I'm some kind of monster and womanizer. They even tried to throw gay on me and child nonsense on me, which I'm like, don't even do that. I've never touched on anything other than women, women, consenting women. That's all that's on the menu. All that other stuff, that's for somebody else's plate. I don't eat strange fruit uh, or strange foods. No, thank you. I don't partake. But people didn't care about trying to dirty up my image. They said, my community is a cult. This is what Toronto Johnson of Horish World TV said was Horish Babble. It's nonsense. Trying to basically make, get content for his channel because his channel is a losing channel. He, 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 he you know, he is. Toronto Johnson is the Tasha K of Horish of Science. He's the Tasha K with a feds on all he needs is a bad haircut and, and big tits, and he's Tasha K. And, and I, I'm honestly, Tasha K, she's not bad looking. She's not a bad looking woman at all. You know, she's not a bad looking woman. She just, you know, you know, she just go overboard talking about people, and she just some things is kind of. But I'll just leave it at that. But that's all this dude is. He's Tasha K with the feds on. He wants to like he exposing all the frauds. And I asked the question: When are you going to expose yourself, Toronto? We already know about you. When are you going to expose yourself? Toronto, Antonio Johnson, jailbird, woman beater, right? DUI receiver, right? All the things I don't, I don't give plenty of receipts on Toronto. You can go look them up yourself. That's his real name, Toronto Antonio Johnson, aka Taharka Bay, or as I call him, Tafarka Gay, the grand shit. I mean, excuse me, the grand chic of the. Uh, a whorish, whorish pseudoscience pimple in Baltimore. Because I'm not talking about the whorish science, excuse me, the Moorish science temple at the regular Moors, but I'm talking about his little sect, his little coven of minions, his little morons who come into my chat section talking a lot of funky nonsense out their funky mouths. Because again, if you're going to support somebody like, like this, that says a lot about you. If you support a piece of lying crap like this, that says a lot about you. These people have zero integrity, zero, zero integrity. Okay. And with that being said, my introduction to Tafarka Gay, I got my special guest what I'm about to bring in. Um, sweetheart, bring in my, my lovely wife, bring in my special guest on uh, Revelation, on the Revelation broadcast, the great Revelation. Bring in my special guest. He'll be in a second. He's bringing my special guest. He shared where everybody knows who he is. All right? He'll be up in a second. Nubin, can you hear me? Wolfram. How you doing, Naim? I'm good, Nubin. How are you? I can hear you well. Can you hear me? Hold on, can you? Hold on. Can't hear him. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Can you hear him? That. Hold on one second. Let me bring the sound in. Because I just started doing the stream last thing, and my wife knows we learned more about many. Mm. Sound. Yes, yes. Hold on one second. Hear. Can you hear me, Nubi? Hold on one second. You, yeah, one second. we can hear you. We can hear, we can hear Dad, you. Dad, you got the sound? Yeah, we can yeah. hear him. We can hear him. I can hear you clear. Hey. Hold on. Hold on one second. We can't. Can you hear me? One second. Let me go. Can you hear me? I can hear you clear. Okay. I can't hear you. Hold on. My wife is getting the sound adjusted because I can't hear. Everybody can't hear right now. <coughs> She's coming in right now. Is it something I have to unmute? You can, you can hear a sound. Remember I told you when you, you want to hear just, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, nine. Can you hear me? No, I can't hear nine. Nine. I hear you clear, Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. 
That's me. I'm, I'm old school. You know me. I'm 53. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. That's me. I'm, I'm old school. Okay. Let me. Let me. Let me. Okay. I know it's doubling up. Hold on. It's an echo. Hold on. Okay. Let me. Let me. Let me. Okay. Now can you hear me? I can hear you clear. Okay. Yeah. Come in one second. One more second. Give me a second. I'm sorry. You can't hear me? No, because I turned it down, but I want where I can only hear it's not echoing. So how will I hear it where it's not? Yeah, Okay, go ahead, Naya. Okay, introduce go ahead, yourself. Can you hear me good? All right. Can you hear me, Nubi? Because I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you no more. You can hear me good. All right, good. <clears throat> well, I'll tell it like this, Nubit. Uh, me and you, uh, we had our thing in the past. Hit your microphone. Okay, before you go on, just let Hit the audience microphone. know who you are. How you came in contact with me and everything, and give you a brief. And I'm, I'm okay. Before you go, okay. Yeah, no problem. Uh, me and you, we had our thing in the past where there was the incident with uh, my son's mother, and uh, that incident led to uh, some back forth in between me and you on, on Facebook, and it led to the Republican Minute Leg page, uh, the reject page, and that's where I was. But that is how Taharka found me. And you know, uh, about two weeks ago, me and Taharka, we did that show. There was a lot of false things said on that show. I do understand. And you did a show afterwards uh, about me, which had some false things in there about me as well. That's what prompted me to call you. And uh, in that phone call with you, uh, a lot of truths began to come out about our situations and these people we know and these people involved. And... Uh, we began to run these things back. We was repeating what we were saying in fiery conflict, and we was seeing what was true and was false. And there was a whole lot of false that went on. You see, and I'll start on my end. You see where, where a lot of the things that was posted on that page by Taharka was things that people from who were rejected from your group have brought to me because they saw me in the reject page. They thought I had common ground with them, you know, as if my situation was the same as theirs. These were people who hated Newman. But you will find that the common commonality of why these people hated Newman were either a former love interest or someone who's been rejected from the group and cannot get back in. They began to form this little group feeding little false information in there. And that's where that was posted from. I'm going to mute my, because I'm still hearing the feedback and the echo. Give me one second. Uh, Dave, come in here. I'm still hearing the feedback. I hear you talking, but I'm still hearing feedback. Let me just get cut that out because people were saying they can hear the feedback. We're just trying to get the audio clear. Just stay, stay put. Dave, come here for a second. Let me just get cut that out because people hear, see how you hear that feedback? I'm trying to find out why there's feedback while I'm still hearing this because I want to know I want to get the feedback off of here. Hold on one second. I'm trying to find out why there's feedback while I'm still hearing this because I want to know one second. Get the feedback off of here. Why is it still feedback? I hear it's coming from here. Is there something I got to do in the secret? I just want to hear from coming from one.
this up when you talk. Okay, now we good. I got it off. It was on the other thing. So go ahead, continue. All right, can, you can hear me good? I hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, then they start sending these I'm pictures. Sorry, Everything yeah. that Toronto was bringing up on the website. The uh, those those messages. There was uh talks in there about being pedos, and you know that's a sensitive term to be slinging around nowadays. You know, very serious well, accusation. Let me Go ask ahead. you, who did they refer to? I'm sorry, I'm gonna cut you off. Who did they refer to as a pedo? Who did they refer to that? Who did oh, they, man, who they, they refer to? They was trying to say that about you. Who was they making those accusations toward? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Who were they making those accusations toward in the group? And what group was that you're talking about? Uh, it was the Republican Men and Leg Reject Group. But they were contacting me in my inbox after you had posted the picture of me with the facial on. That's mm -hmm. how they knew to find me. And they tried to come up with the uh, the slander. That you saw posted on uh, to Harkis page from each of those individuals, the ones you know, ones rejected from your group once, ex members. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. but after we talked about it, you know, you had issued me a challenge because remember, after that, uh, I did the show, you did the show that following Tuesday. We had a phone mm -hmm. talk together, and it was a lot mm -hmm. of uh, it was a lot of fiery back and forth at first, and as yeah. we start to get into it. You issued me a challenge, did you not? You said go yes, out there and find a fact. So damn it, I went about it. I tried to find that fact. I couldn't come up with none. So they had me looking stupid. I ain't like that. You know, but you see what you have here, right? If you have that, you have the angry female. Mm -hmm. And what the angry female will do is they will reach twice as hard to destroy you as whatever they gave in when they met you. And that's what they did, band together and created all of that stuff. The, 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 the stories of the, let me remember one. They said that one of the stories was that I was in the hotels with women and men. They told that, yeah, I said I was in the Best Western Hotel with women, and I admitted that, but they they added, this individual who we're going to name added the men part. I told her, ain't no men ever put their hand on me or been in no hotel. That's a lie. They tried to add extra sauce on it to make it look juicy, like I'm not just a heterosexual, I'm a homosexual, and I'm a child molester. These are the things they tried to make up about me, and nobody can ever say anything like that because it never happened. Women can say plenty of things about me because I own up to it. I'm a heterosexual man, just like you. I'm sure you're, you're a heterosexual man. I know that hands down. I know your child's mother, which we're going to get into in a minute. We're two heterosexual bronze men. I don't like to use the term black men. We're two heterosexual bronze men out here who have things going for themselves, who are trying to do good things in their life. And we're living in a time where... Those folks are out here trying to bash heterosexual bronze men who like only women who have a hypersexual um, energy of masculinity and want to deal with women, consenting women. Now, you got people out here who are engaging in all kinds of so-called alternative degenerate lifestyles, and they want to link us to that. Mm. But that's not who we are. Me and you spoke. We made it clear. This is who we are. You see, I have a family. You have a family. We have children, right? We're not coming from nothing broken. We didn't break anything, but they want to put that on us, the very people who come from these broken places. Isn't that not correct? No, you are correct. And that's when it came down to somebody bring me a fact. And nobody mm -hmm. could bring me a fact. Remember, they tried to say the cult thing. And I said, well, now mm -hmm. somebody described me what is a cult. You know, they had that quintessential uh, version of basically like uh, Jim Jones from back in the day. But nobody, I mean, what is a cult really? Church, that yeah. could be a cult. A gang is a cult. America is yeah. a cult. It's a set of beliefs. But show me the cult in this community. And that was unfounded yeah. as well. So, mm -hmm. Newman, what we yeah, end up exactly. having here, it was a lot of hearsay. Mm -hmm. This was a lot of hearsay mm -hmm. going around by the what, what was the term we used? The bitter black 
females the bit of the bit of black females we used another term the bbb but we're going to use that today we yeah, know the I bit of black females but this was the case of a lot of that evil that we talked about uh -huh. yeah you talked about mm -hmm. and um and that uh what was another thing on there there was certain and then there's leaders to these groups and the mm -hmm. same ones are the ones with the main reasons to be better these was two of them two of them you know i i get receipts on it mm -hmm. later i mean i probably sent you some receipts two of them was yeah, ex, yeah. ex love no three ex love interest okay. of yours now you know mm -hmm. how the woman can be when they mad and can't have them again he got somebody else a nice house he couldn't give me a house he gave somebody else some kids he couldn't give me some kids and this was a result of that using me as a tool to attempt to get back at you mm -hmm. you know true. but that's the level that they will stoop to stoop. Mm -hmm. you know you got people out there who would burn down an entire kingdom so that they could be king of the ashes yeah you're right. Or queen of the ashes. Queen of the or ashes. Queen. Mm -hmm. And that's what mm -hmm. was, was going on here. Using using the uh the platform of the uh the difference that I have between you to kind of wedge their way in. You know what I'm saying? Oh now now we got somebody whom whom, whom we can use uh uh to go against Nubin kind of so to speak. Yeah. You know, these are the kind of people. Let me, say, let me say this: These are the kind of people who throw the rocks and hide their hands. They cowards. They never show themselves. So you and Toronto became the hand, and they were the rock that they were. You they were putting the rocks in your hand to throw them at me because these individuals who we're going to name mm -hmm. have had this blatant hatred for me. Why I have no idea. Because a few of them I had dealings with, you know, I admitted that, that I had a few them, not all of them, but a few of them I had dealings with, consensual dealings with, and everything was fine. And then when people finish up their little journey together, their little, the completion up comes to their little end of their little relationships, certain people are going to part amicably and move on others are going to be angry and upset that goes for both men on one side women on the other side and people become bitter and they become vengeful and they become hateful over the years these are people who are talking about me who haven't who have been out of my community that i personally either put out or they faded themselves to black that's a term we use when people leave the community we fade to black like the end of a movie fade to black because i'm a filmmaker that's where the term came from and i adopted it into my community that means faded back into the black world of ignorance, stupidity, degeneracy, because right where we're building a community of illumination, of brightness, of true power, this is what we're building in the image of Amen. I said, Amen is the true name of the Lord. I stood on what I said. I had been ridiculed for my thoughts on the higher powers that be, that bring about life and creation and death and regeneration. I've stood on that for over going on 12 years now I started my community in 2013 my community not my church not my cult not my coven my community I started my community of intelligent indigenous people in 2013 2013 to be exact it was referred to as the Republic of Mental Act. we went with the Republic of Mental Act because Mental Act was the ideology a higher way of thinking for the chosen intellectuals, the chosen, because the word mental act just means chosen intellectuals. Into elect means chosen and mental because the mind, those who are mentally chosen to raise to a higher state of thought. That's what I started on because I was born that way. I was always born and I had this gift of the sixth sense being a higher thinker more than the people around me. And people who grew up around you, would, would grow up around me, will tell people that today that I was always off into my little world because my little world had to do with higher intelligence, extended thought. I blocked out the things that was around me. And when I came of age, went through the things I went through, through the Freemasonic order and all these things, and I started seeing things, 
and that generated images, future images, or what now I'm putting out as mental act. So I started on this foundation. I started it from the dirt. There was nothing. I didn't copy from my former people that I looked to, my former mentors like Dr. Malachi Z. York, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I didn't copy nothing from these people. And people will tell you that these people were stepping stones to where I was going, which was we ended up becoming all in one from the time in 2010 when I received the word mental, like it came to me in an inspiration or a vision or a thought. People have a problem with saying, oh, things don't come to you in thoughts. Of course they do. That's how we pass intelligence, through thoughts. Sometimes we don't have to speak. Sometimes we just have to look at each other and send messages. So I was always into that extra normal activity of intelligence, always. And that was the foundation of my community. So when we formed the Republic of Mentelect, and I formed it in 2013, um, ever since then, we went through evolutions and changes. We had people come and go in and out of this community. I've done hundreds of classes, did over 3,000 broadcasts, wrote over 20 books. This is my history. I'm giving you. I've done all of that. I've accomplished a lot in my years of teaching it has changed and altered my life. You're talking about somebody who came from the streets, from the hoods of Brooklyn. I had to make my way up. I grew up around degenerates and I grew up around good people. I come from a two parent home. My name used to be Scott Anthony. I gave my bio. I got in trouble when I was younger. I changed my life. I got a youth, a, a YO status. And I did I not give that history of myself. That's the real history. Okay. Yeah. And I came clean about everything. That's when, when Toronto, aka to Harker Bay, was up here playing to my, he gonna expose himself. I said, yeah, I'm gonna expose everything you trying to make look like a secret. I said, I'm gonna expose the Scott Anthony thing because that used to be my name. My mother, if I never hid that. I don't know why he making it seem like he ain't saying who he say is. I said, my legal name is Nubin Azar Amin Kares. That was changed, or the changing of that started in 2003, and I altered it all the way up until it got to 2017, where it finally all became Nubin Azar Amin Kare. So these were put together names. I stopped being Scott Anthony uh, in 2003. Me and my girlfriend at the time, Zafora and Ray, who I gave a name, her name is Mike Kim Zafora and Ray. She's a model. We lived together for five years. We both changed our names. I gave her her name. We live together. She's a beautiful woman. She's a model now. She, I think she's a mother. Shout out to her. she don't talk to me. You know, she hate me or she don't she like don't like me because I broke it off with her. But I'm not gonna go into that. But I'm I'm truthful about my life. You know, me being a young man, I made mistakes in my life, like all men do, all when we make mistakes, you know, dealing with people in relationship. I never hurt anybody, I never damaged anybody's life, I never talked down and bad talked anybody publicly. I just took it and rolled with the punches because the focus was on building this community. That's what the Lord, the true Lord, Amen, put in me to extend my people, those who are in illumination and brightness with me. I'm not here for the entire black race. You can't do nothing for the black race because these very people who are talking about me now are of the black race. They're of the black mentality. They don't want, they want to see us with nothing because they have the mentality of nothingness in them. OK, and these the same people who I took into this community who came and wrote their letter, joined the community, said they wanted to be part of this illumination, this power, this power of growth in our people, a chosen group of our people. They fooled their way. They tried to fool me and get in here. But then when they got in here, they showed nothing but blackness. And we're going to bring those people out tonight. We're going to speak about these people. But bring up the Toronto thing and how he reached out to you and what y'all came across. Mm. Well, you know, Toronto, um, uh, the guy, you know, he Harker had, Bay, you know, those you don't know, he's talking about the Harker Bay, Toronto Johnson's his real name from Baltimore to fake more, but go ahead. All right. Toronto to Harker. Yeah. He, he came through me via, uh, he saw the page. He saw the page. He saw, he saw the Republican BJ. middle Lake BJ page. Yep. He saw yeah. the Republican Menelik reject page messaged me how he was doing a show uh on um you and uh because obviously there was two posts about me on the uh republic of Menelik reject page he had forwarded those back to me and i told him i had read those before but months had went 
past since me and you had that uh that little uh disagreement and i had kind of left it alone he said he had a show mm -hmm. and i told him I'd come on there and explain what i knew um only as much as i knew with all of those um everything that he brought up on the screen was stuff that was sitting in my basically my either my inbox you know what i mean things that people had mm -hmm. sent and um so you know, i'll forward that to him because like that's all the evidence i the evidence i had you know but it was mere hearsay what people were saying not what had had happened but what they were saying happened things they were probably making up because they were bitter and if you look at all the people all of them exiled from your group or or just from your presence had that deceit mm -hmm. in common they were deceitful beings but that was their mm -hmm. tool, the deceit. And they only got mad because they got caught in their ways. And the, even mm -hmm. the deceitful act of trying to use me to get back at you, you know, very cowardly of them, you know, very childish mm -hmm. of them. But uh, I ended up going on the show with Toronto. Uh, we have our little, uh, uh, I think it lasted about an hour and some change. Then like the very next day, uh, you went on. And then you said some things about me that, yeah, I know you, you heard it from a source, but they weren't true. Deceit, you know, but what okay. they, what stop you there. Wait, wait, let me stop you there. Let's just say who the source was, because it's important to how we ended up coming in contact with them. The source he's speaking about is his child, his child's mother, Tamara Rigby, who used to be a member of this community. She is no longer a member of this community. She was faded to black last year. And I, I'm going to go into what, what happened with that. But anyway, she would tell me all kinds of things about her child's father. I'm like, well, who's your Because we ended up speaking because she came to one of our Florida conferences and she was in contact with her Florida captain because we have captain, soldier. She was a soldier and she was in contact with her captain who was in Florida. And she would tell her all kinds of stuff about her child's father, how he won't leave her alone, how he keep abusing her, how he 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 did all kind of kicked her in the stomach when she was pregnant, all kind of stuff. She said punched her in the stomach. And you know, I was at the time trying to put her with a brother who was out there in Florida, which would have would have been a big mistake. I thought, you know, she, you know, was upstanding, but I'm not gonna go into that. But I tried to put her with a brother because I see she wasn't with nobody and I seeing her for a while, I said, you know, I would like to see sisters with brothers in the community. It looks like it's a good look because I don't, I encourage that because I don't want them to bring outsiders in who are not about the message. So that creates conflict. So I, my mindset was she should be with a brother in the community. So I tried to put it with said brother, it didn't work out. And that's how me and her started talking. I never tried to advance nothing. That we, we talked around stuff here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest, but we never went there or really talked about it. Me being a man, I'm a natural flirt. If I see a woman, you know, who's single, I might go ahead and flirt with her just because that's just who I am. I know you a man. You understand that. Men mm -hmm. going to be men. Yeah. And I never hate. I'm a heterosexual man. I love women. And I, but I don't, I, don't, I don't feast on other men's women. You say I don't do that. Now women come at me and I don't know. I can't say I can't say nothing for that. I'm gonna always be a hundred percent. We spoke, and this is when she gets off into her baby father. You know, how she he she has a son with um Naeem, and she talks about how she has to raise the boy alone. Naeem has no control, he acts like a little boy. He was on the police force, and he got all the stuff she was saying, all the yeah. allegations she made. He got beat up by a white man, he beat the hell out of her. He just he just was childish and he, he she scared of him and she ran away from him. And I'm listening to all this and I'm like, wow. And then she shows me who he is and I see him online. I said, OK, whatever. So, you know, I'm like I'm listening to all this stuff and I'm like getting this image in my head because I'm listening to her. But I always know from being on Earth 53 years, you know, that there's always two sides to every story because right. a lot of these feet. Most, I'm not going to call them women because they're not women. They're females. There's a difference, and I'll explain in a second. They like to lie, make up their own story. You hear this term? This term is popular now. Tell your truth. How many mm -hmm. of y'all heard that? Term, tell your truth. There's all. Listen, let me tell you something. The truth is not subjective. The truth is supposed to be objective. There's only one truth in many versions. Many versions which are lies. 
In other words, these females, just like males, they tell their quote unquote truth, which is usually a lie because they don't want to own up to what they did. They don't want to confess to what they did in the, this, the, in the dissolving of the relationship or how what part they played. And so when she was telling me this stuff, I'm like, yeah, I'm hearing you, but what you do? What did you do? What did you do to get to, to, for any of to happen or put yourself in that circumstance? Because I didn't say, oh, you know, you deserve to be hit and beaten when I because I don't know what happened with y'all. She's I'm listening to what she's telling me. And so I'm like, I still asked her, what did she do? Oh, I didn't do anything. I'm just trying to blah, blah, blah. And then I said, and this is why she faded to black. I said, let me tell you something. I don't, I, you know, I don't believe nothing you're saying, honestly, because I don't feel you coming clean. You got to come clean. I know, I know, and I can hear the error of BS, the air of BS when I hear it. And I'm like this. I'm fair with everybody. I said this, this truth and that truth is somewhere in, the, in between is the whole, the real thing. I stay in between because I like the pure truth. I don't like lies. So I told her this is your fault. No matter what you say, this is your fault because you didn't have to deal with Naeem. If you said there was red flags and you still chose to deal with this man, lay with this man, produce a baby with this man, then that's your fault. That's not his fault. Men going to be men. But when are you women going to take responsibility for the relationship? Because at the end of the day, you, you laying down with this man, you will have his baby. And if things don't work out, you going to go or he going to go his way and you going to still keep the baby. So my thing was when I told her that she said, oh, OK, I understand. She was agreeing with what I said, and, but she mm -hmm. but her ego obviously took over and then she faded. I'm leaving. I'm like, bye. Okay. She felt yeah. like by her saying. That was her getting back at me for telling her the truth. I'm like, listen, if me telling you the truth and saying what was on my mind, the truth, not my truth, the truth, that is your fault. Because anything even happened with me, I blame myself. I even blame myself for this situation with these females because I should have never dealt with them. You should mm -hmm. never deal with low females. You right. saying when you have integrity, when you when you got integrity, you care where you put your penis, and I care about where I put my penis. You yeah. know, sometimes you. Don't you slinging it, you you lay down with people who have no integrity, who like that saying goes, you lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas. Yeah. When you're dealing with people who have no integrity, like these lying ass females, right, mm -hmm. who made up a whole bunch of nonsense on me, all face yeah. out with bold face lies that they would never dare to say to my face or to the uh, public because I got a lawyer now. Right. I have a lawyer. I'm gonna start taking legal action, you know, and I I'm, I'm gonna hold that for later. Yeah. But she said that. She left. She faded the black on its own. She just left. I was like, bye, bye. Because I never cared. This is the, uh, the nonsense Toronto was saying that when people leave our community, I'm somehow vengeful. I'm mad because I wanted their money, right? If you ask anybody in the community, I stay trying to put people out because right. I don't want no, I don't want, I'm going to just say it like this. I don't want no niggas in my community. I don't want niggas in my community. I'm a mechanic. I don't want no niggas in my shop because I know what you mean by niggas. I yeah. know what you I yeah. yeah, because you know niggas bring nothing but foolishness and nonsense and yeah. chaos. I don't want no niggas in my community. Did and she... these people that came here were very much niggerish. And I'm yeah. like, I wanted them. I don't want your money. I don't want your dues. That all money ain't good money. I don't care. I'll get more. And I don't need you. And they got angry at that because they was trying to use their money as a weapon. Oh, well, I'm leaving. Bye. Mm. You free to Nobody's holding you. This is not a cult. This is not a cult. Nobody lives with me but my children and my wives. Ain't nobody living on my property. Ain't nobody being held hostage. No. Don't paint that picture. That's a damn lie. Mm. Nobody got to say what you know. Yeah, well, that's you know? deceitful. The deceitful nature follows everything else that the, the snake can do. Deceitful. Like, what were we saying? That the uh, uh, fruit of the poisonous tree, you know? Yeah. You know, the same thing with my son's mother. Did she tell you how many children she had? She only made it sound like I think she said you know she only had one. I, I and I don't remember her recall her mentioning any other children. I don't recall really? it. I remember one she focused on with you, your your son. She had one from her prior marriage as well. You know, okay. Now that's who used to, you know, get super physical with her, you know. That's mm -hmm. them stories that 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 you know is being portrayed towards me to create an image. But you see why liars lie because they want to either they either scare 
or they attempt to augment reality or a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if somebody mm -hmm. was confident in themselves, they ain't got to lie. What they got to lie for? Exactly. It's, however egregious it may be, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I don't care what it is. Did I rob a prostitute? Yeah, I robbed it. You know what I mean? However nasty the story may be, if you're confident about it, you're going to tell the truth about it. Exactly. You know, there is shame in the lie, just like they say shame to do mm -hmm. You know, so well, it's, it's, yeah. well, there's lies in the belief. If you look at the word belief, you see the word lie in there. There's no, you look at the word belief, you see the word lie in it. They yeah. actually believe they own the act. They believe yeah. what they say. They believe that I did something to them. They believe I'm a cult leader because it makes them feel better about their life that ain't turned out to be nothing. Because see, yeah. I built them. I moved on. These were people who were in my life for a second, a quick season. I had a good time. They had a good time. We moved on. They didn't move on because I guess they thought I was supposed to still be in New York, living in the, my little apartment. And by the way, let me speak about my apartment. I no longer live there. Um, for y'all that have said that my apartment was some dirty little shack, my my thing is, if I was living in some dirty little nasty shack, why y'all all kept coming back there? Ooh. I never lived in Philly, Kuala, never. Even when I when I had no money, I wasn't living nasty. I'm not a nasty person, okay? My little studio apartment in Brooklyn, where many women have visited, and some females, you know, where they visited, they, they usually came back more than one time. And my place was always clean. It was always together because I can't, I don't even like clutter in my house. I don't even have a lot of stuff in my house. Not, not no real stuff. You know, stuff, if I get too much stuff in my, I send it to my storage because I like to move around. It was a decent sized studio for me. And my and whatever woman I was, stay, let stay with me at the time, that was it. I didn't have no whole family of people in there and all this other nonsense. Like they try to make it, oh, he live in a dirty little, they go, of course they're going to dirty you up. They got to dirty up my place. So then my question is, why didn't y'all come back? And if it was so dirty, why y'all didn't clean up? Mm. You see, why you didn't clean up my place if I was so dirty? Why you didn't clean up? They, they stayed in my place. Some of them spent weekends at my house. Why are you want to live? Why would you? That's the question. Y'all such clean women, so-called women. Why did you stay weekends at my house? They would literally come in on Friday and leave Sunday. All right. Mm. That's how I had. So if my place was such a, a hell pit and everything else, and I'm just and having sex and filth and all that and doing all this, why did you stay? Why? Because wouldn't a real upstanding woman have said, no, nah, I'm not going that nasty ass place. I'm going to go to a hotel. You better pay for a hotel. I never had to do that because I don't live in filth. I don't live in a nasty place. They, they had to create that in their mind to make me a nasty person. But then that means why are you messing with a nasty person? That means you nasty. Ain't, ain't you guilty by association? Mm. Don't that's a word at that point, but you see now, you see the commonality. You know, once you get rid of them, and now, uh -huh. now, it, now it's that it's that vengeance that we got to take out that anger. You know, oh, and, somebody hey, asked the question. Hold, hold on, one second. Somebody, uh, Anaya Kelly, she said, "So why did he lie about you so much? Meaning, why did you lie about me? Please explain why." Because she said she asked the question. Well, why did he lie about? Why meaning you? Why did you lie about me so much? Explain that. All right, yeah, yeah, no problem. I, I'll tell that right now. I was just telling stories of everything that people had sent to my inbox. Nothing. I don't know Nubin in person enough to even tell a lie about him. These were stories projected from other females who were ex members of the group who were either kicked out of the group uh, by Newman or ex love interest of Newman. Like when I, I sent the whole, uh, what was that, the plane ticket? That was a woman's story named V. Muhammad. When I told about the little cult in the hotel thing, that was the story of a, uh, a Jessica Nicole. And when I heard uh, yeah. the other yeah. cult pr proclamation came from a, a Cassiopeia Wilson, you know, I don't have other than the, you know, and then there was the whole, there was this one crazy chick I didn't even tell her her name was like violet or, or vin lexa i didn't even tell her story because she was saying that she, she was saying some crazy shit man she's talking about magic and shit so i, I didn't even say that because i just sound unrealistic but that's why i said all that i'm just saying other people's stories and at that point it was uh 
it was really war. It was like it was really like kind of fuck noobing, you know what I mean? Because I ain't know you before before you made the next day you made that video about me. I got so mad. I called you and me and you. We had a motherfucking long ass exchange. You know, yes, that little exchange we had on the phone that, that went on for about, you know what I'm saying, 45 minutes. And that's where all the truth started coming out. So yeah. when I got to the truth, yeah. I was like, oh, wait, hold up. If I had a problem with Newman, man, I should just went to him myself. I got these other people with their stories and mad about some other, you know, some made up shit to try to get back at somebody. You know, the same, you know, exactly. the same way that uh, uh, a politician would, uh, uh, or somebody would try to slander a politician to get him out of a position of power. You know, because they couldn't get the uh, the vote or the or the or the, uh, the the whoever they wanted in power in. That's why that mm-hmm. came about to be like that. And obviously, you know, there was uh, Taharka's stories. You know, what I'm saying, but those were technically unfounded too. Taharka, I have nothing against him, but he should not have been the one with as much stuff as he had to attempt to even cast any kind of stone. When you live in a glass yeah. house, if you, you know, I don't want to, I ain't gonna bring up his record, but he has stuff on his record that shouldn't have, you know, had me really on the show with him. If you know what I mean, yeah, because yeah, it's, I mean, it's the first type of people that you know I hang around, and then you know, you can have certain stuff in your past that you know you might have served your time for it, but it really don't uh, absolve you of what you did. You know exactly. Yeah, exactly. I got nothing against her, mm. but you know, you can't have mm-hmm. some stuff on your record and, and kind of because now they're going to associate you with me or associate him with me. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, here's the thing. So let me let me say this again. Somebody said everything you said on the channel should be null and void. That's what somebody said. Well, what would you say? Like, everything you said on Toronto's show, Taharka's show, about me should be null and void. Ain't that correct? Yeah, as of right now, consider all of that null and void. Okay. Null and void because they, y'all basically, again, you was going off of what you heard. I don't fault you for that. I was going off of what I heard about you. I went off of what she said about you, what Tamara said about you. She got the name Tendra I gave her when she was in here, and she faded to black. Just like you was only going off of stories that you heard from those lying females. And you, I remember you was going around calling me gay and calling the men in the community gay. And we was like, what the hell are you calling us gay for? Why? What is this? Right? And you kept calling us gay. And I found out later that you was Tamara's man, and you were the, her father or her child. And you was mad that she was in the community. You thought I was trying to take her away from you and break up your family. And I said, far from that. I never came at her no kind of way. I thought she was single when she came in because that's how she was portraying herself. She said, I'm a single mom with a son. And then she and then she got into you much later. I didn't know about you. I really didn't. She turns around later and started telling, t- talking to her captain. And then I found out about you. And I'm like, this is the guy that's calling y'all gay and Y'all ain't shit knowing that you gonna see me when we gonna we gonna scrap when we, you see me. And I'm like, where all this aggression coming from? And I mm. sent you a message and I got aggressive. We both got aggressive. And yeah. I told you, I told okay. you, I said, I said, Naeem, I said, I'm not the one. And you said you ain't the one. And we was both going back at each other. I said, I'm not gonna be going back and forth with you, bro. I said, she's gone, she's no longer a part of this community. She said what she said about you. Anything she said, of what I'm thinking about you, it came from her. But now I said, you going up here and you being a pest and annoying me and annoying my people, going on pages with these with these chicks. And I found that you start talking with them. So that's when I was like, oh, this dude is bitch made. I'm no disrespect. I'm like, no disrespect to you. At the time when they said that, I was like, oh, this dude is bitch made. Why are you up here with these hoes, whole babbling, sitting up here letting them fill up your head with lies? I said, he must have not dealt with, with these females because a man who's really dealt with females know how they speak, know how they get down. They can tell lies and make up stuff. And like I said, that's why I was like trying to figure out where you was coming from. So when you went up on to Hawker's show, I'm like, oh, this dude going to Hawker because they're like, no, I know he ain't going up there with this whole babble. So it, tell me, stop me when I say when I say something. Like that. <laughs> whole babble, man, I'm going to use that. But yeah, keep going. I explained though, but yeah. yeah. Thing. That's what how you linked up with them. 
because of the reject page. Y'all all linked up to the reject page that we made. And the reason why we made the reject page, the very first person on the reject page is the person you talked about is, is Jessica Nicole Perry. Jessica Nicole Perry was in this community. Um, I forget, she was there a few, a couple of years. She got put out in about, in and around about 2020. She met her boyfriend, now I guess her baby father, Stephen, who was also here. They met in this community and got together. You would think, basically, when she came in here, she was a single baby mother. You know, she had a little daughter. And she, you know, her and Stephen hooked up in this community and they got linked up and they started dealing with each other. Now, they have a child together, I understand. She, she started, she came, she came up one time and I'll never forget because I never, I, you know, I, but upon she came to a couple of the conference. I told you, I meet these people sporadically when we do annual conferences or get together on my birthday. I meet these people sporadically. They might pop up and come to the conference. And the reason why I do that is because I don't want a lot of contact with people because of this. A lot of members, when they start to, if their mind is not in the right place, if their soul is not in the right place, if their body's not in the right place, they start doing the degenerate things in this world. You know that term, familiar, familiarity breeds contempt? Mm, you know that term? Does. Yeah, I'm familiar when with it. People, it does. I found, I found it to be true because when people start dealing with you or feel they got an open connection to you, they start trying to humanize you and demonize, meaning to bring you to a lower state. They try to demonize, bring you down to earth. You know that term, down to earth? That mm. means if you have high exalted thoughts about yourself they're going to try to bring it to the ground and you too because that's where they are and that's what she started doing i spoke to these people here and there when i came to kind of how you doing hey how you doing? hey menzo that's what they call me menzo or i'm in ray they say hey menzo i'm in ray i say hey how you doing everything i speak you know i have we, we all dress to the nines i we put out a banquet i pay for everything people flying driving busing i put we get a banquet together i teach a class before then awesome class and then next is the banquet and the buffet that i pay for we get the room everything everybody's sitting out having dinner we have a nice time everybody meeting each other and then they go back to their hotels and they go about their business and leave that's what we have that's maybe a two-day thing out of the year then we do it on my birthday same thing she came to a few of the new york conferences and at some point she hooked up with her baby father who they still get with steven i forget what his last name is Stephen and her got together. Now you would think she would be thanking me in this community for meeting her child's father because she had no nobody was dealing with her. If you see the picture of how she used to look, you'll see why. But she got better looking over time. She started working out. You know, she was hefty and she got off that. She got off that weight and she, like I said, well, you, I got remember on the reject page the pictures right here. I got them side by side, right? And, and she should be thankful that she met Stephen in here because there wasn't nobody hollering at her. You know, say nobody. So she got a man out of here. So I actually this community helped complete. You see, her, mm -hmm. her um her this this community helped complete her family. She met the man, or that he became a male after he left here, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And um, so she met this, so she ended up meeting this guy in here, and they got together, they still together today. You would think that instead of thanking me for creating an environment where she could meet a man that she could be with for her life. She has some anger toward me. Why? I have no idea. She claimed mm. that she had. No, that's what she, let's watch. Let me tell you the crazy reason why she said that. She that? claimed that. No, I'm going to tell Jessica Perry. She's the yeah. ringleader. She wanted to be the Jessica Nicole Perry. Yeah. She said that I called her and her mom said something about her being a demonic black bitch. Now, I don't know if she was just speaking about who she really is and not me seeing her. But yeah, I do think of her that way, especially now. Right, because of the things she I would say she had funny eyes, like weird, crazy eyes and right. whatnot. And she like like had her eyes like a wolf, a crazy like an animal. Like that's the literally how her eyes look. I got her on the page. So so um she said that's why she just turned against me all because first she was all good with me and talking all nice and everything, and she was good. And, and then she was all, next thing you know, she flipped on me. I'm like, what the hell is this about? I never did nothing with her, never touched her, never came on her nowhere. Cause I would definitely wasn't attracted to her. So I don't know if she was attracted to me or whatever the case may be, or she thought I should be, but she definitely was in contact with females I dealt with. And they probably, you know how these females, when they start talking, they're talking about the man, how he is in the bed, how long he stroke, how long the pole is, all that. 
Right. I'm like, whatever. You know. So they reached out to you. And then what happened? Man, well, you see, and at this point, uh, this is before I had all of this just saved in my inbox. Even back then, I kind of knew that. You see, they all had some kind of motive. You know, it was never one big thing, justice against the evil cult leader, Nubin. It was everybody's little small story that wouldn't really add up. And it, like, mo like, like my, my situation, motive to get back at me. They had motive with their own little small story. Even the, 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 the V. Muhammad thing. Once a former love interest of yours didn't get the house and, and had a kid. Stop for a minute. V. Muhammad, for those of you who don't know, is Vicky Muhammad. Vicky Muhammad of North Carolina, right? Who, who used to come to my apartment. She, she was in the community at one time and she left. Me and her started dealing with each other after the community, not during. We never did. We talked and whatnot. We talked around grown men, grown women stuff. And then when she left, me and her started dealing with each other. We had an off, on again, off again thing where I would come to South Carolina to see her Columbia, where she had a place out there, and she would come to Brooklyn a couple of times. But I would mostly go out to her place in Columbia, South Carolina on the weekends. Her children would go with her, with her mother. She had two small children that would go with her mother, all right, and go to her mother's house. And me and her would have the weekend. We'd be running around over there, up in there getting funky. You know how it go. You know what I'm saying? We have a good old time and she cooking me food and and, 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 and drawing, drawing and, 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 and just basically acting like a wife to me, fixing my food. I got my feet up. We smoking herb in her house. We talking about the future. You know, we doing our thing. We laying up. We having a nice time. Two consenting adults. I would take the bus out there to go see it because I didn't want to fly. I wasn't trying to fly. So I would just take the bus bus out there and just listen to my music. She'd meet me at the bus, pick me up in her car, take me to the crib. You know what I'm saying? And we would chill. Okay. That's what it was. And we did that for a while. Huh? You turned better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this one, you know, she, I'm going to give you going far. She has two older children. I'm not going to mention her children or whatever. She has four children in total. I'm not going to mention them because they have nothing to do with this. I'm only mentioning her because she's behind this with with, her, with, uh, with, with um a few others. With this mm -hmm. chick, Cassio P. Wilson and uh, uh, Nicole Perry. Uh, what's her name? Um, what Perry? What's her name? Jessica Nicole. All right, Jessica Nicole Perry. So anyway, so at one point she talked about having my baby. All right, I'm not gonna get graphic of the stuff we used to do, but she used to make sure she held on to my sperm. I'm gonna just lay it like that. All right, when we had sex, I'm not gonna graphic about. It. We being raw and uncut now, right? right now, yeah. he wanted to have my baby because I didn't have any children at the time. I didn't start having children until I turned 50. Like 49, I, my, I made my first daughter. She's, she's going to be three now. I'm 53. She's going to be three this year. I didn't have any children at the time I was dealing with Vicky. All right? V. Muhammad. V Vicky Muhammad. All yeah. right? So what happened was she said, I want to have your baby. I was like, eh, eh, like eh. being who she was. And I'm like, nah. Because she, it wasn't, I never looked at her as a woman of integrity. It was just... Ooh. Playing up because when she was in the community, she was okay, she was good, it was, she was decent, but she had her ways about her, you know. And I was like, whatever, we I'm just dealing with it just like that, you know. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to make somebody, you know, a jump off more than what they are because she was a jump off. I'm gonna just be real, all right. Yeah, That's the true. I her seriously as my woman, and she could yeah. be mad about. I don't give a damn. I'm not you. You sit up here and lied on me and slandered me and talked crazy about me. I didn't get mad at that, but I'm not going to treat her more than what she is. And I'm right. and, that, and I'll tell you that one dealing with and females. I'll let you know if you're a woman, I'm going to take you seriously. If you're a female, I'm not. Okay, we're right. just having a good time. Females usually have no problem with that because they in it for what I'm in it for. And me and Vicky, after a while, we was like, oh, we're going to do that, and that's it, right? Mm. And so. She was cool with that, at least I thought she was. And then when I got back, when I started more in Brooklyn, I was seeing my current wife right now, and I was going to her house and seeing her. Vicky would be texting me, "What you doing? Thinking about you? Stuff like that." And you know, I said, "Thinking about you too, baby." You know, "What where you at?" Stuff like that. I'm missing you and this other stuff. Saying little stuff like that. I'm like, "Oh, here we go. Here go the obsessive, right?" So I'm like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Because I had no intention of going back 
and dealing with her in South Carolina. And no intention. Because she likes when she gets mad, when she gets upset, you all kind of homosexuals, you all kind of whatever. She calling, she calling you out your name. She make it, she goes, she's very childish and immature. She go oh, on um, and, make it, and everything, calling you all kind of you know how they do. Yeah, they, they, they do that just they just trying to they trying to pull a string right there. They can say anything, yeah. they, they say anything in the world about you. You know, yeah. then you get back yeah. in the bed until you're cool. And then when y'all on bad terms, she say the same things again. Wishy washy, but that's how they get. Yeah, she did that. I even I she 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 don't went she don't went we don't had like three four years ago she literally was with these people. See, this is not the first rodeo. We was on. She threatened to out me about some, again. She threatened to out me about something. Oh, I'm gonna tell this. I'm gonna tell that. And this that the third. And I told because she was behind. Her, she said, "Don't make me tell." She was going like she has. So I said, "Vicky, say what you gotta say." I, I said, I'm gonna bring you on my radio show, and I want you to say what you gotta say. Say what you gotta say about me. Oh, and she because she didn't think I was gonna call a bluff. I said, "Say what you wanna say right now." Because I, if anybody got anything real, real to say about me, I'm gonna own up to it. But if you lie on me, I'm gonna sue you. If mm. you lie on me, if you make up stuff, I'm gonna sue you. All right. So she's like, she punked out. She ain't come on. She didn't say she punked out. Right, because she really didn't have nothing. She was just getting everybody hyped up to make you think she, I was going to shut up because she had something on me. They ain't got nothing on me. They just lied. But that, but but so so that was it with her and she, her and Jessica Perry. They was they got YouTube things up right now talking about me when they 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 making these crazy talking points about Newman said that Newman is a. a it's the devil and all this other this crazy shit. They, I don't know. It was just bugged out. And I was like, whatever, man. I wow. thought it was over with. Well, all right, y'all had your little run. Goodbye, whatever. And here they come again. So, guy, okay, what you had to say? Wow, no, I was listening to that story. I didn't know it went that deep with the with the oh, whole big. <laughs> this ain't the first dance with these people. It's the same people who constantly attacking me because I moved on. I live in a beautiful mansion. I live in a beautiful home, a mansion, over 4,000 square feet with my beautiful wives, both of them, and my four children. I'm not thinking about New York no more. I'm not thinking about that apartment no more. I'm not thinking about them no more. Why don't they move the hell on? Why are they still contacting you and Toronto Johnson to Farka Gay and sitting up here and talking bull crap about me? Why? I've done nothing to them. And Toronto's thing is, you know why he mad? Because I, I questioned his uh, so-called prophet. Noble Drawley, I said, I don't think, I know he's not a prophet. I said, I know where he got his knowledge from, which was Freemasonry. He got mm -hmm. mad at that. I said, I proved everything. He said, I failed miserably. Okay. He asked where the receipts was. I gave him the face, right? Mm -hmm. I said, that is a Shriner's face. That is not a, a Moorish face. That is a Shriner's face. The Moorish face is shorter, okay? Because I have both of them in my locker. I used to be... Um, uh, well, I am. A, I'm still a Mason, right. but I had the Shriner Fez, which is the long one that he wears. You know that and that um and that Noble Drali wears. Right. I had the Moroccan Fez, the short one, and I have my Nawabian Grand Lodge Fez, the blue one that's in storage. I got my apron. I'm a lifelong Mason. Once you get initiated in tech, you are part of that brotherhood forever. I came into the Nawabian Grand Lodge. I learned. And knew and was taught who the Masons were because I was doing the hand signals, I was doing the signs. I was, I'm a master Mason. I came in as an entered apprentice under Dr. Malachi Z. York's Nawabian Grand Lodge, in which he got the Scottish Rite Charter from. Now I went in and then we got we got initiated in Brooklyn and the Brooklyn Tabernacle, which was at one point in time the Answer Law community. It's now the Egyptian, whatever they call it now. But we was in the old hall of knowledge when we got initiated into the first step of Freemasonry, which is into apprentice, EA. All right. And the ritual, I'm not going to go into it. It's kind of like a hazing thing. It ain't no gay shit because people always try to make it seem like it's some secret gay shit. And no disrespect to the gay. That's their business. But it's not no homosexuality involved whatsoever. That, you know, we don't. We, I, don't yeah, make, I already know. I, I know a past master. I know a past master. I know it ain't no gay shit involved. That's one you know, the people, no. yeah, mm -hmm. people they put when people don't know something because they on the outside they say anything you know what I'm saying just yeah. it's mysterious to them you know exactly so 
they wild this thing up that they mind can conceive. And when the, mm -hmm. the first when they mind can conceive it's some gay shit, they probably gay. You know, yeah, I, I, know exactly. a past, I know a guy who's a past master. I know it's the, the little hazing and you know, and it's a lot of memory that you gotta retain before you can even move up to the level in that uh of masonry. Exactly. So I just want I know I just wanted to dispel that myth because once you say oh into the apprentice, they're gonna be oh that's some gay shit. You know what I'm saying? You know how to enter a no, no. There was never no kind of homosexual anything going on. Cause ain't no ain't no man putting his hand on me. And you ain't gonna convince me of why you gotta put your hand on me in any kind of way. It ain't no convincing. I don't give a damn. If that would have went on, I would have walked out. If I seen any, they might touch and they put in their hand. That never happened. Not with me. Or nobody that was in our life. I don't know what other people do. That's not my business, but I know what we didn't do or never happened. So I just had to make that clear. So I went in this, into the apprentice. Then I went up to a fellow craftsman. That's FC staff. So EA to FC craft. Then I went to Master Mason. That was the third degree. And that was all completed in 2002. I left the Nuwabians when I got my Master Mason degree. I was 32 going on 33 years old. All right. And I left because it was a lot of nonsense going. I'm not going to go into it. There was a lot of foolishness going on over there. I didn't want to be associated with it. I walked away. I walked away as the deputy warden of the lodge. There was a brother who was over me by the name of Muhammad Qasim. He was my worshipful master. That's what they call the top guy. Just That's where the Nation of Islam get the turn from Master Fahd Muhammad, Master Fahd Muhammad, because they was all Masons. The Nation of Islam is a Masonic organization. They don't want to say it, just like the Moorish Science is a Masonic organization. They don't want to say it because... It, I guess they feel it takes away the legitimacy of the organization that, that they follow behind the order of Caucasians. But that order of Caucasians comes from the ancient Egyptian orders of the past. So there was masonry there. The point I was trying to make to Toronto was that because he kept on saying, oh, these hand signals and things like that come from the ancient Egyptian people, our people. I said, no doubt. However, mm -hmm. Drali didn't know that. He didn't mm. know that because I, if he knew that, and because he remember he was showing all them pictures, right? With the Egyptians doing the thing, the hand symbols that I was telling was Freemasonry. Yeah, I said, okay. I said you're saying that now, but what you're not explaining is none of that would have been valid back in 1920 when Noble Drali was doing it because he didn't know anything about no ancient Egyptian stuff. He knew about what he was seeing which was the Freemasons doing that, the black Freemasons under Prince Hall. He became a member. That's why he wore the fez. That's why he was standing on this square. That's why he was doing all these hand symbols and the grip, the pan grip, the unity grip, um, you know, what they call unity. That's really a fellow craftsman handshake. They was doing all of that. Yeah, and again, it. this is not, and I'm tell you, let me just say, this is not a secret I'm exposing because you can go in any bookstore and buy a book on Freemasonry. They'll tell you all of it. Masonry yeah. is not a secret. Okay, so when I was explaining to him, y'all got the feds, you stand on your square, he y'all do your hand, he had his hand over his chest. Those are all Freemasonic poses. So if it quack like a duck, if it walk like a duck, if it talk or swim like a duck, it's a duck. And right, y'all wearing places like the Masons, you're doing the hand signals and gestures, and not only that, you're using the titles honorable, yeah. master, noble, right? He, which he tried to say was. Oh, that term noble come from the Arabs. No. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, that's what he said. But you can go look up the titles of all people who have high titles in Freemasonry. Illustrious, which Dr. York used. Mm. Uh, noble, which Drew Ali used. Honorable, which Elijah Muhammad used. Master, which Master Fahd Muhammad used. They were all high-level Masons, 33rd degree Shriners. And I tried to explain to him that's what Noble Drew Ali was. I, is that not proof? Am I not making the connections or not? Oh, yeah, no, no. You, I for sure get you. And uh, Noble Drew Ali was for sure a Mason. But uh, a lot of people, they want to deviate away from it because of the that that aura of mysteriousness. Mm hmm You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even... I don't even think Noble Drew Ali himself called himself a prophet when he was alive. I mean, that was almost 100 years ago, but... Yeah, he passed away in 1929. And let me just say this. Toronto, a.k.a. Taharka, said that, oh, these people making up the stuff about the prophet and the people saying this about the prophet and that about the prophet. They don't know nothing about the prophet. Taharka, 
You was born in 1973. Your prophet died in 1929. You don't know a goddamn thing about Noble Drawley. He tried to get on me for using Wikipedia. Why? You know why I use Wikipedia? Because Wikipedia is the quickest source you can go to for information. He tried to say Wikipedia is not accurate. Well, let me let me ask something. Because he said, oh, anybody can add to Wikipedia. That's a damn lie. What you can do is you can submit something to Wikipedia and they will let you know if they will not either they will check, fact check it with what they have already. And, and if it don't match with what they got, they're not using it. You can, right. I can submit, we can submit something now. It don't mean they're going to publish it as fact when it comes to people's biographies. So he don't know what he's talking about. He said something stupid, some stupid lie that, hey, my little son just submitted something there. Went, and it went, you're a damn lie, Toronto. You just right. make up stuff. It's like the whore that you are, a whole a whole will say anything out their mouth and put anything in their mouth. Wow. Okay. <laughs> He's a whore. You know, just, and, 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 and real talk. Because I dealt with this dude to everybody who deals with this dude, they know he a whore. Okay. They know he's a liar. They he know that he make up stuff. And like I said, now let me ask you before you go on. Before we so people wondering why you on this cast. Am I paying you any kind of money? Am I paying you? No, you ain't paying me. We 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 agreed when during that phone call that we had that exchange of words that you know I'll come on here and I'll clear the air. And remember, I even told you that this part was gonna happen. Uh, they gonna say that oh uh uh Nubin gave uh Naeem a wolf uh, uh 30 pieces of silver to betray to Hark, but that's not yeah, that's that's gonna be the point. Mm -hmm. you know. You ain't paid me nothing to come on here. In fact, you know, we mutually agreed to go live and hash it out. But we end up hashing it out during the talks, you know what I'm saying? So then when we got on here, my main reason was to come on here and tell the truths. You know what I'm saying? And the truth was that everything that was on that on my last show was unfounded. Hearsay, libel, slander. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't go around saying the word pedo. You can't go around saying somebody cult leader. You can't go around saying somebody a uh 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 some type of a womanizer, you know, without hitting the word hardcore fact. And the only yeah. hardcore fact you got is that this man don't deal with you no more. So now you mad. And I'm like, you know, y'all using me as a platform to get back at another to, to tear down a, a a a black community leader, basically. You know what I'm saying? You making the co and tell agent out of me is what they doing. Okay, I get it. You know, um, somebody asked, let me get this question. What part of your message would Wolf want to debunk or have questions about? I don't know what that means. What part of your message would Wolf want to debunk or have a question about? Somebody just asked that. I don't understand the question. I think, what they're saying is, I think I think he's asking, I think the person doesn't know what's going on. So he's just thinking that okay. this is a person that's debunking something you talk about. He probably don't know what's going on with Toronto. You know, you have people tuning in for the first time. Oh, or okay. They didn't tune right in now, there's the other a videos um, where he could go back. Uh, I believe on your um, your high and mighty page, I had saw the one where uh, I don't know. There was one on your high and mighty page, and then there's one on more World TV where you're actually with uh, Taharka. You know, he would have yeah. to go back that far to see that. But it was uh, yeah. basically on uh, it was on uh, the status of what the noble Drew Ali was. Was he was he was he Mason, which Taharka said he wasn't, because Taharka said the man was a prophet. But you know, I guess uh, I said, about the prophet thing. Yeah, I said he can't be a prophet because a prophet brings prophecy, meaning right. something new and new to come into the world. Drew Ali didn't bring anything new into the world. He brought nothing because if he did, he would have knew that Elijah Muhammad was coming behind him and fought with the nation of Islam next year after he died, and they would continue on his teaching. So you, I want, I asked him what what future prophecy. I asked him, Toronto. I said, what future prophecy did Noble Draw Lee bring? Because you can't just call yourself a prophet. You have to prophesy about the future. That's what a prophet is. One who speaks about the future. Noble Draw Lee did not do that. Okay, and he got mad at that because you notice a lot of people come up here and start calling themselves prophets. I said, if I was going to technically use the term prophet, that would fit me because all I do is talk about the future. And everything I said done happen. Everything I called on show. So I used that title when he called me the lion. Look at the prophet cursing and this, that, and the third. And when he was, I was cursing them out. I said, well, let me ask you something. 
according to the story of Jesus, even though I don't believe we don't we don't acknowledge no Jesus, wasn't Jesus when he he wouldn't be in pie because that's what they get the idea of a prophet, this nice Jesus like type archetype that was created by the Catholic Church, this gentle person that not that's not real. But when Jesus got mad, according to the story, wasn't he turning over tables and flipping on people and all that? Yeah, he told that whole, he shot that, that whole club up, didn't he? Gambling in the temple, according to the story, he turned yeah. over tables, uh, beating on people. But that's not, that don't fit the, don't that, does that fit the archetype of what he said prophet is? No, no. You know, the, the one who foretells something, that, that sounds like some nigga shit, flipping the club up like that. Whatever he did, he shot that motherfucking temple up and they was in there gambling or whatever, but but he said, he said, I'm not a prophet because I cursed him out. And I talked about, well, I, I would have to say, you tell me what a prophet is. What is the demeanor of a prophet? What he's going to say is Jesus, which is not real. So you never met a prophet. You can't say what a prophet is. That archetype you got in your head was created by Caucasian in Europe, the, the uh, Roman Catholic Church, who admitted they made up the character Jesus. Jesus is not real. Jesus comes from the Greco-Roman god Jupiter and the Greek god Zeus. All they did was combine those together because they were trying to create the Council of the Sea of Digits in 325 BC. They created a character because they needed a prophet because they knew in the old world we had so-called, we had prophets and sages in the old world and those people were considered to be divinely or divine is connected to the higher state, which is the fourth dimension. So they said they needed something like that to push off um, Roman Catholicism or the Catholic Church. So yeah. then came they that the ancient Greek Greek, Greek gods, they come see the Greco-Roman uh, um, pantheons where they come from. So yeah. they took the Greek god of Jupiter and the Roman god, no, the Roman god Jupiter and the Greek god Zeus and just combined them together and you got Jesus. And how you know that to be true is look, look at Roman god, type of Roman god Jupiter and Greek god Zeus. And look at Jesus. It's all the same person. Same white boy with the long hair and the beard. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. the Emperor Constantine, he oversaw the council of Nicaea. You know, yeah. the Emperor uh, Constantine, he did it on purpose. And that was so he could group everything into one to pay in tax to him. Constantine made himself the first pope after he uh, conducted the council of Nicaea as well. Control. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. It's a control thing to get everybody under one one. One one tax paying bracket to him to solidify exactly. Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. You know because Rome because Rome is still a, a, a city. The Vatican is a city of its own. See because the Catholic the, the Catholic Church is a government. All right, that's what the religions thought to be. They were really just ways of the new form of government, the religion. Yeah, that's why when they came to America, they said they were going to separate church and state. Mm. Because it was run like that for a while here, and then they yep. decided to separate the government from the church. Like, but, but prior to that, everybody was reading out of the playbook of the of the Roman Catholic Church because Rome and Greece was under the Roman Catholic Church as a government, and it still is to this day. For sure, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and they needed you know. a god. They needed. Hold on, let me say they needed a god to solidify their message, and this is when they created Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. It's phone about to die on me. Is it anything important I needed to clear the air? Anything okay. else? Just that this y'all didn't find anything on Scott Anthony, right? Is that not correct? Yeah, through lean, I could only find one thing, which you already know, everybody already know. There was a strong arm robbery, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, which I admitted to. That was it. Back in the day. And that's all I yeah. had on. Okay, did not Toronto try to make it seem like there was more hidden stuff on me? Did he not try to make it seem like that? Uh, well, you know, he tried to make it seem that way, but if it is something, it would have been brought up. It would he would have had it if it was. He his whole thing and how he tried to flip it was, oh, we can't find nothing on Scott Anthony. He kept saying that was my real name. Is that my real name, Scott Anthony? Now. I mean, I looked under Scott Anthony and Nubenazar, Nubin you know, uh, and yeah. get nothing, you know, but the, what I told you. Uh -huh. But what I'm saying is he tried to make it seem like that's my real name. Now, I said I, that was my real name. In the I saw your license. It said Nubenazar, right? 
Newman is on well, the car. show. Yeah. Then you your license. Yeah. I mean, you you blurred out like the uh the whatever, but it's new business. Hey, your license. I'm in car race, and he and so how am I Scott Anthony? He said that's my real name now. That's not my real name. That was my birth name. I don't have that no more. So that's clearly not my name. Uh, you know, he just uh, you know the same way he just you know it's a childish thing. You know, when somebody tell you what their name is, even though they changed it, you know, uh, I mean, but the thing is is. That's kind of almost just the beef tail of it. He calling you Scott Anthony. You call him Toronto. We know what your name is. We know what his name is. Newbie, yeah, right? No, but see, his name is really legally Toronto Johnson. My name is Newbin Azal Amankari. If my name was Scott Anthony, I would have just said, I don't have nothing to hide. That's my point. So but he's wife, lying when he's that's his not wife, my name. So he didn't get himself registered as to 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 Harker. To Harker. He's not, that's not his name. His real legal name, that's just an alias he uses. In other words, he's trying to make it seem like Nubin Azar Amin Kares is an alias and I'm trying to hide something from the world. And I told him it is not, that's my real name. I showed my license. You can't get a fake name on a license and a passport legally and put it up there. You got fake people that can, but they're not going to legally show it. I'm not going to show it out to the public like I did. I volunteered that. I didn't have to do that. I volunteered it to show that he's lying. Just like he lied about me being a cult leader. I said, I can't be a cult leader because I don't see people long enough to hold cult meetings. I see how, what kind of cult you know is online. That's <laughs> right. the first online cult. Right. I said, I'm a, I'm a community leader. I have a community, that international community. And we have grown and people don't want, they can't process that because they all they know when they see our people gathering, if it ain't about white Jesus or niggas going to court or niggas going to church, it's a cult. So they call, I told him the white man was calling the Moorish Science Temple a cult. They was calling them a cult back in the 20s. And they had real cult stuff going. People was getting sacrificed, murdered, throat slashed. Look their history up. You ain't never heard nothing like that about my community. All you ever going to hear about is some is me teaching what's called intellect and pushing this out to my people and putting out all these broadcasts and people want to say some of the stuff I'm saying sound outlandish, which is your right to say because you don't know anything. And and unfortunately, these lying ass females are trying to attach nonsense to me, which yeah. again, I got a surprise from my, my lawyers. Yeah. But pretty much that's it. If you got that's anything else to ask, I'm not I just want to say that a lot of this was the, the attempt to to tear somebody down or the assassination of character is the last result somebody will use. It's that skullduggery underbelly that they use as the final attempt to tear somebody up. That assassination of character. And that's what that was. Mm -hmm. A lot of this. I wanted to come on here and clear the assassination of character up. If the real problems if that somebody should have with anybody. And I don't see why Tahaka couldn't call you personally and handle what he had to handle. You know, uh, y'all basically both got a large level of knowledge there. It well, didn't let me stop you. Let me stop you quick. I, call, I tried to call him about 10 times before this thing aired after it because he texted me his number. He said, email him if I wanted to come on the show after the first encounter we had. I didn't like the first encounter because he kept muting out my mic. He kept cutting me off. And I said, oh, this is another Sarnetta now. I'm thinking with a nigga with a Sarnetta with a feds on. You playing games. You don't really want to hear what I got to say because you in love with your prophet and I can't say nothing to truth about him because you get in your feelings and then you want to attack. So I said to him, I said, dude, I'm not going to play these games with you. That's when I started getting frustrated because now you're trying to make me look like I'm crazy. I'm some just, I hate noble. I don't know noble drone. I, I, you need to do you. But I tried to explain the facts on him. You got in your feelings and that's when all the attacks came in. And that's when he had me on a yelling back there because he kept muting my mic. And I was, no, that was a passion. I was going in. I was trying to get back because once you start attacking me, I'm going to hit you back. And that's how all that started. That's where all the vitriol came. Next thing you know, I'm going to expose him. And it, that's the same technique he did with Tariq Nasheed when Tariq Nasheed was making the videos and talking and doing it, just going about his business. And Toronto started attacking him. Yeah, he a fraud. He did. He raised the money for a community. His community, his, it's not for a museum. His museum is a damn club. And I, whatever his thing is, what business of it is yours? 
Nigga, you shouldn't be talking about nobody. When you gonna get back all that money you stole, Toronto, from your Moorish brothers? You know all the money he stole from them people to start this fake Moorish community that never stopped. He started collecting money in 2016. You can look this up on this nigga. He started yeah. stealing money in 2016, and the people got a petition out on his black ass, his Moorish brethren. They say, I, did I not put it up there and show everybody? When yeah. I put up the petition, go look it up. Put up the petition for Toronto Johnson. The people that gave him money for this Moorish village because he the nigga always begging for money and then he turned around and accused us of stealing and take it from the people. This nigga begs for money like he sat up here and begged for money when he had me up there talking about I'm going to do something to him and he had me up there sounding crazy. But I told him on the phone, I said, nigga, I left the message for you and put it on Moorish World TV because I'm going to sue your black ass. I doubled down on it and I was laughing at the clip he had, but I tried to reach out to him several times. He has a Google voice message. You know this. Yeah. Yeah, I had that problem too. Yeah, he don't answer his phone. He go through a Google voice like a bitch and he wait for you to sit up and he ain't he gonna listen to what you said and he ain't gonna talk to you. He gonna see if he wants to. I spoke to do one time and we both yeah. agree. Look, we just gonna go head up. We're gonna say what you got. I'm gonna say what I got. And that's gonna be it. Okay, I think it's thing. I think your thing went off. Yeah, I think his thing went off. But he said we had to say, and I'm about to end this soon, right? Let me just say this. God, he said his phone was about to die. He was on his phone. So I'm going to just say this. I'm about to end this soon. I'm not going to put no whole thing. I did the Superman video. I felt good about that. Thanks, Brother Naeem Wolf, for coming on. I'm going to say this. I did not pay him a dime. I did not threaten him. I did not say I was going to anything. He went, the way we connected was the way we connected. He contacted me. He said, Newman, I got the text messages. I recorded our phone conversations. And I said, what we said, because I said, I am now record everything so that I'm protected in case people say crazy stuff about me. I have to take these precautions because people really want to see me down. And I, it's sad that people think like this and these type of people exist like Toronto Johnson, who will just sit, literally sit up there and make up stuff about me so that he can have, you know what I'm saying? So that he could have content on me, you know what I'm saying? I just set up here and I gave my life blood to this community. I am a content creator. I got a comic book company. I got a comic book company in which he tried to crap on that and say that, oh, I, I the, um, Sister Ballhead, Jamila Muhammad, which I'm going to speak about, I'm going to regurgitate the stuff I said about her black ass. They set up here and said, I make comic books for my members to sell and I keep all the money or ain't no profit. In it. I said, I created this business for my love of superheroes. And I said, I wanted to see superheroes that look like us because I thought that that would bring up the minds of children where they wouldn't have to look at a white Superman or a white Thor or a white Spider-Man or a white this one. I said, we should have images that look like us. And I created them. I didn't sit around waiting for people to do anything. Let me show you. Let me take my for my books. Give me a second. One second. I created, and you see I'm wearing some of my merchandise from my comic book company, which I don't call it a comic book company. I call it a, 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 a epic book uh, company because I don't do comics. I write epic adventures. The name of my company is called Unlimited Epics. You can look it up. I own the rights to it. I have a trademark. Here's a few of my books I've written, the comic books. Anyway, Herc, right, issue one. From Unlimited Epics. You see my name at the top and the artist sister, Jiren Mena Perez, she did the artwork. This is a real comic book or epic book, as I said. I don't like to say comic book, but this is what they label. You see this real stories in here, real drawing. The artwork is great, right? Give me a second. One second. <clears throat>
All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Nature call. All right, so you see She Fly, which is a character I created. Here's the book, issue one. There are exactly three issues out now. Issue four is coming of Unlimited Epics, our epic book company. All right, you see the artwork in here. There ain't somebody in my book. Oh, it's just a cover. There ain't no real work. It's pages and pages and stuff. Here. These books retail for $6. I wholesale them to my members for two dollars or two dollars and fifty cents. Two dollars if they buy them up. They're gonna then resell them to the public, which they always sell, and they make six dollars. So that's four dollars profit plus the two dollars they put back in. So they get their money back plus triple, really double. They get for two dollars, they get six dollars back. So if you buy a hundred books, you do the math for two hundred dollars, you're gonna make six hundred dollars back. I don't get none of that money. That's their money. Okay, so I created an industry inside of my community. Where these people sell epic books. You got people, I'm not saying it's supposed to be no career for nobody, but if you want to, you can make a good living at this. Right? And I have people in here who make good livings. You got people that make over six hundred dollars or more a week just selling books that I created. That's my intellectual property. That I didn't sit and copy from nobody. I came with this idea. The unstoppable thug. Right? This is book three. Now, of course, I was inspired by Marvel. I was inspired by the Hulk when I made The Unstoppable Thug. Because I ain't going to sit up and say, oh, that was an original idea that popped in my head. But there's more to the story. So I was inspired by Hulk, but I didn't copy the Hulk. I was inspired by Thor and Superman when I created Herc. And she flies. I was inspired by the Wasp and other Marvel characters. I was a Marvel head growing up. So I said, one day I'm going to create my own characters that look like us and give them their own story. And that's exactly what I did. And I own the rights, trademark, and everything to everything that I created. I own it. You look it up. Toronto pointed that out, but he only wanted to point out a magazine I did back in 2011. Before there was a community, he tried to make it seem like, oh, he just using women. He taking naked women's pictures from the community putting in that's a damn lie there was no community in 2011 the community didn't start until 2013 i tried to do an adult magazine with women in it for men and it was a good idea at the time but i stopped putting money behind it because i was focused i started focusing on and shifting on other things but i already told that already i, I let all that be known my point is i'm an above board businessman now and i ain't came on here and and told the truth about how he was using information from these females to make me look like some kind of evil, crazy, demonic cult leader who's sitting around doing this, that, and the third when I'm just a man who built a community, you know, uh, an unlimited epic series, of an epic book company, a man who has started his own clothing line, Underlord. Uh, we're gonna have the site come up my, you know, I did businesses, I did real businesses. I didn't steal anything from anybody. I didn't rob anybody. I didn't hurt anybody. I even had this one chick say that I assaulted her son, which is a damn lie. That's a lie. I, I, <laughs> that, I'm not going to leave that alone unless that come up. All that crazy stuff you said, Vanlexa, uh, Violet, I'm going to leave that alone because I got the receipts on what, you, what really happened. You don't want to go down that road. But what I'm going to let you know is this. I don't care what Toronto say after this because I'm going to do one more issue on it and I'm closing the chapter because I'm doing the six parts to this. This is the fifth part. There's one more that's going to come Tuesday and that's going to be the final hammer. So I'm going to let you all know, those of you who made up this stuff about me, Jessica Nicole Perry, Vicky Muhammad, Cassiopeia Wilson, Jamila Muhammad. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Um, who else? Um, it's two more. Uh, um, might as well throw the Monty Pot black ass in there because she said, I'm not going to say what she did. Not yet. Uh, and it's few, another few cats that got her and it was one more person. It was one more person in the mix. Uh, um, I said Nicole Perry already. I said V. Muhammad. I said Cassiopeia Wilson. I said, um, I said, um, it was the last person we said. I just want to get all these people. Right. Reason why I'm saying it is because I'm getting a lawsuit together. Oh, by the way, um, excuse me, Day, my wife, put up that thing that Jessica Perry is hiding behind. Jessica No Cole Perry, where she put my information. I don't know if it, essence, 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 doo doo brown, essence downtown doo doo brown, Miss Piggy, right? Who made up a bunch of lies, 
who ain't nothing but a fat black single mom, sister ball head, AK Jamila, the one I laid with in Best Western. I told that story and I told you how horrified I was when I really seen how she looked because she catfished the hell out of me. See, I had all kinds of stories that what this has taught me is to leave these hoes alone. I leave these females alone. I'm done. OK, I will never deal with this again. And those of y'all who think I'm making this up. I ain't got to lie about nothing. See, they tell lies for all the hundreds of lies they tell about me. I throw one big stone of truth at them and it makes them angry. You see, yeah, Toronto is a scumbag. Yes, he is. That I agree with. Demons in blackface. Yes, they are. And again, I didn't lie about one thing. I didn't lie about one thing because what I'm going to say and all the other ones, you, you, Leanne, a.k.a. Jizz, all of y'all that got all this BS to say out your mouths, I'm very lawyered up. Very lawyered up. You, y'all crimes, and that, that, put up that image of that white man she put up there. That what she said, that's me and Jessica Nicole Perry put my information online when he I was born, how old I am, where I have my address, and she put this crazy looking white man up there. Please, um, babe, put that up there and let everybody see that. Because when you see this on Facebook, you'll know what she is. No, listen, Meatball313, new being you are a champion, man. Stop lowering yourself. Let me tell you something. For all you people that keep saying I'm supposed to take the high road, I am taking the high road by exposing myself. I'm tired of people dirtying me up and I'm supposed to just sit here and take it? No. Until they do that to you, you take the high road. I'm going to take the low road with them and, and come back up on them. Hold on. I want to get that picture up that Nicole Perry. Okay, give me a second. She about to show the picture because I want y'all to see this. And let me say this. You know, I don't want people saying, oh, Nubin, you too big for this. Um, when it comes to foul play and people lying on me, I'm going to set the record straight. I don't care who feel that way about it. We moving on. Like I said, you see, I did the Superman thing. I'm not thinking about them, but I'm not. I'm setting the record straight. And I'm going to make one last thing I'm going to say. All right. Okay, exactly. Let me just say this. I, it is higher thoughts. If it is higher thoughts, me, boy, but I got to say, it can't be higher thoughts with people sitting around thinking this about me. I'm not going to allow it. When people talk about you like that, you let's see how you feel about it. But don't tell me how I'm supposed to handle things. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. We're about to put the picture. I want y'all to see this on Facebook. This is how far these people will go to dirty me up. Look at this. Okay, I'm gonna mute one more second. She about to mute me and we're gonna I'm gonna show you the picture because I want y'all to see this. Yeah. 
Dai un nome. Ah, io lo voglio lasciare. Vai, hold on, ok. Ok, sto meno. Okay, here we go. It's important I see this. Okay. Can everybody see that? All right, here's the image. Because we'll show it next time because we had a lot of time bringing up. Can y'all see this image? This is the image on Facebook that she got uh, that she's saying is me. This is Nicole Perry's image she put up. She trying to say this is me. Under this image, look at the name, type it in and go look at it. What she's doing is putting this image up there. Hold on. Okay. What she's doing is putting up this image on Facebook, and I already reported to the FBI, and everybody reported to the Cyber Crimes Unit. She's putting up here saying this is my image, and she's put my name, my birthplace, my my uh, my residence, all on Facebook. I'm like, why? I got her name and her birthday and all that. I never put it up. I never put that up about her. Why are you putting my personal stuff up there? Which again, I don't care because I already started alerting Facebook, and I'm starting to alert the FBI. So this is technically considered cyberbullying and cyber crimes. And all of you females that participated in this, I'm reporting everybody. I'm sick of y'all. Everybody I named, the whole black demonic crime bitch family that sits around in private and tries to slander somebody who ain't thinking about y'all. I'm not taking this no more. Okay? You keep saying uh, Meatball 313. Are you in our community? You keep saying we're supposed to be taking higher thoughts. Why you ain't with us? You sitting on the outside looking, and I hate these people that sit on the outside and look in and try to sit up here and talk about how I should be dealing with things. Don't tell me how to deal with the things because you're not up there getting slandered. You're not being drugged through the mud and being dirty up. I am, and I'm not taking it no more. So there will be one last installment on you ladies on Tuesday, and that will be it. In Toronto, I'm going to say this to you because I'm about to end this. You a liar. You 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 do nothing but hold babble and make up stuff. Naeem confirmed that. He confirmed that y'all had nothing on me. He confirmed that I am not a cult leader. He was sitting on, he sat on to fart this show and 
got misled by a bunch of lying females doing a bunch of whole babbling with Tafar the gay over here. This is why he sits up here and people threaten this dude because he sits up here. This is why people sit up here and threaten this dude, right? Because of what he do. Okay, there's Naeem again, but we're about to end it out. I'm gonna uh, add to the stage. So you got back on the phone because I'm about to wrap this up. I'm gonna let you say one thing and then I'm gonna wrap it up. You on? Yeah. Guys, say, say, guys, say, I'm yeah. about to wrap this up. I'm gonna let you have. Guys, I'm gonna let you have the final thoughts on this. You know, uh, my phone had died. I left the block at work. I had USB on my TV. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna let you have some last words on this because I'm about to wrap it up. I said what I had to say. So anything concerning them that you want to add on before we close out? Because me and you, we good now. We basically got to the core of everything. Like men, we talked. I didn't coerce you into nothing. I didn't give you any money to do this. We, you came on here to set the record straight, just like I did, because I'm tired of the nonsense of people tearing my name up and lying about me. I'm not going to have it no more. Go ahead. Yeah, what you going to say? Anything last to say before you close out? Anything you want yes, to say? Sir. Newbie, I'm about to drop back in the shadows. I did this to set the record straight. Click thing. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You came to say, I came to set the record straight to you. I think it was mission accomplished tonight. Like I said, we told the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help us, Amen. Whatever they got to say, I don't care after that. Because if they lie on me, continue. I already, I'm already lawyered up and I'm ready to sue. And I'm ready to start taking channels down. I'm not like you, Toronto. I can afford a lawyer. I don't got to get on Horish World TV and beg for donations for some threat that's going to come because the impending threat is coming if you say my name again. I'm going to get your channel took down because, again, Tariq played with you for a year. I'm not. I promise you I won't. I'm going to come after you with everything I got, and I'm going to make sure because I know you live in that little shack in, De in Delaware or in Baltimore, excuse me, in Maryland. I know about that little shack you live in and when I know where you stay, so I will have papers sent to your home. That's the only reason why I'm saying I'm not going to say your address or nothing, but I told you, you messed up. When I said you fucked up, you really fucked up. You should have just left me alone. If you couldn't take what I said about your so-called profit, then you should have went about your business because all I did was convey to you what I knew. If you don't want to know the truth, then don't ask about it. If it's going to be, if you're going to be butthurt because I told the truth about your so-called prophet and the fact that we are the real American Indians of this land. We're not from Africa. We're not no African-Americans. We've always been here. Our culture and identity has been stolen from us as American Indians. I stood on it. I said I backed up the things that uh, um, I stood on it. I backed up the things that Dane Calloway was saying. I acknowledge what he's saying to be true. Kareem Howell, uh, 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 Solano YT. Medicine man, all the brothers that put in work to prove who we are as American indigenous people, American Indians, the real indigenous people of this land before the so-called Native Americans came here, which they came from across the Bering Straits. There was no African slave trade. I said to Toronto, if you said we came on African slave ships, prove it. Show what slave ships we came on. He never did. I said, if you say Noble Dry is not a Mason, I proved that he was. You proved that he wasn't because all I had, I said was, all you got to do is tell me where he got his knowledge from because you didn't just go from being Timothy Drew or uh, Thomas Drew, born in 1886 in Virginia to Noble Drew Ali who died in 1929. You had some sort of intervention or connection with someone else, again, who taught you knowledge. I asked him who that was and that could have ended it. He wouldn't answer. I ain't talking about that. Then how are you going to talk about me about anything about what I don't know when you won't put it to rest what it is? Because you claim you know the truth. Whenever I ask them, I don't want to talk about that. We ain't here to talk about When, nigga, when we going to talk about it? When we going to talk about it? When we going to talk about what you did? You keep lying about things I did, which I never did. Nothing on record of anything to connect me with anything. We already talked about what I did. I said what I did. When are you going to expose yourself? Because you claim you, I'm, all, I'm going to expose the fraud. It's time to go hard. Well, when the hell are you going to expose Toronto Johnson, Toronto Antonio? I'm waiting for that show. When are you going to talk about when you beat your woman on record? When are you going to talk about when you had DUIs on record? I'm not saying allegedly because the paperwork is dead. When are you going to talk about how you was a, well, you, you did armed robbery and, and, and you did some time in jail? You didn't do the whole eight years after you became a more now. Usually niggas do things and, 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 
in, in the right order. You go out and you a thug, then you get some enlightenment or your ass get locked up and you have this epiphany and you become a Muslim or Israelite or Christian or more or any or Pan-African clown like Umar Johnson, right? Who's sitting up here talking about we both Fugazi that you got in my section. But I'm going to leave that alone. But you either come those things and then you stop committing crime. Toronto, the only nigga that put a fez on his head and talked about Allah, you rock ball. And then you go out here and start committing armed robberies, nigga. Toronto. Then you go on your 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 your, your crime spree. And then you try to justify it in your on your horrorish world TV that, yeah, see, you know, you know where we come from. You know we do. We live in the hood. It is what it is. So basically, nigga. Allah and, and no, Mo, Moorish science wasn't strong enough to stop you from your crime spree. You got a whole record behind after you got the damn uh, Moorish feds on. What kind of clown shit is that? You were supposed to stop committing crime. You started, you, you a career, you, you damn near a career criminal, allegedly, but damn near, yo, yo, up to your 50s, you was committing crime. From 70, so this was 18, armed robbery. I can remind you this dude record armed robbery, uh, uh, assault with a deadly weapon, armed robbery. Uh, uh, DUI, battery, uh, 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 abuse, all this stuff is on this dude, right? DUI, all this stuff. But I'm not going to keep rehashing it. Y'all know his history. You know what he did. That's it. I'm done talking about this. Part six is coming. Well, I'm going to let, I'm going to put everybody picture up here who had something to do with it. And then I'm going to let, I already started contacting my lawyer and the cyber crimes unit and whatnot. And the people who've been going against me talking crap, putting my information out there. You can believe and think whatever you want about me. That's your right. But you're not going to come in public and dirty me up. And that's all I got to say on that. And um, y'all look at this, share this. You know, again, I got one more part and that's going to be, that's part six. I'm done. Um, share this. We're going to close out. We'll be back with more high and mighty thoughts. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed the Superman video. Please watch that. Share, share, share. It's getting a lot of views. We're picking back up the content again. I'm not doing this for monetization. I'm doing this for illumination and the regeneration of my people. And that's it. Uh, Naeem, I thank you for coming on there. Brother, you told the truth. You, you, how you say you told the truth? And how you say tell a lie and shame the devil? That's what he did tonight. I didn't give him nothing. I didn't, I didn't beg him to be on. I didn't threaten him. He came on. He wanted to come on here. Because he was originally supposed to go on Toronto's show and tell the truth. But Toronto kept stalling him, putting him off because he probably knew it was up. He probably knew that he was going to recant all that BS he said on Toronto's little shit show. His little horrid babble TV. Which Toronto ain't going to take it down. Naeem was your co-conspirator and he outed your ass, dude. But you won't keep it up there because you a hoe. And all you do is hoe babble. And all you care about is getting content. Because now you had to take the Tariq shit off your page. So you steaming mad about that. After he took your ass to court. I will take you to court too. Say one more lie about me. Get one of them bitches on here to lie about me. And I'm going to out everybody. And that's my last message. We're going to close out in the name of Amen. By the power of Amen. And Amen we trust. And Amen we thank. And then Amen we continue forward forever. Stay tuned to tonight's broadcast. Stay tuned to tonight. Um, um, American Intelligence Broadcast. Good night.